All right, so this is part two of these notes. So we've started by talking a little bit about the idea of static electricity and static charging, how we can cause electrons to kind of move from different objects and what happens when you take one thing that's charged and you hold it up to other things, all right? So now we're gonna talk a little about exactly how we can charge things because there's really three ways that we can give something an electric charge, all right? Now, the first one is the one we've been discussing the whole time. It's referred to as charging through friction. And that's pretty much exactly what you expect. It's basically when you rub two objects together and you cause and you kind of move charge around. All right. So for us, how are we really going to find that charging through friction? We can just kind of say when neutral objects, oops, excuse me. All right. When neutral objects rub together. All right, basically what happens is when neutral objects rub together, the contact causes one object to steal another object's electrons. So we just say when objects rub together, one object can steal another's electrons. All right, and there's a whole kind of extensive catalog of what objects take electrons, what objects give electrons. Um, it's referred to as the triboelectric series, if you will, if you want to look that up. Um, it's not really important to us right now, so I'm not going to go into much detail. But just in case you're curious, we'll type it in there, triboelectric series. And basically, it's a list of the different objects and materials you can find and whether or not they're going to try and steal electrons or give electrons away. Because we're going to find out that different materials that we work with have a different willingness to steal or give things away. All right, but charging through friction is very simple. It's the thing you run into most often because whenever you get shot during the winter time, if you are walking across the floor, generally that is through charging through friction because what's happened is your feet have rubbed across the floor. They have picked up electrons from whenever you're walking across. Usually a rug is very good for that. And then when your hand goes to touch a metal doorknob, the electrons that are built on your body find a pathway they can escape from and they go into there and that's where that shock comes from. All right, so the first one, charging through friction. Now, the second one's referred to as charging through conduction. All right, and I've written on the notes, it says follows the rule of charge equalization. And basically what that means is that charging through conduction is another one where you're touching something, all right? But in this case, and I'm just looking at my notes to make sure I got it right. What happens is I take a charged object, and touch, usually it's something that has a different charge or even a neutral object. So touch a different charge, neutral object, and I spell, I apologize. You see how great I am at spilling on the first try. Um, but what we find out is that charging through conduction is basically when you take something that's charged and you touch it to something else. So in this case, our example could be, I took something that was negatively charged and I touched it to something that was neutrally charged. All right, but what happens is, you now have a situation where all the, all the electrons on the negatively charged rod wanna get out of there. And they're looking for any situation that's better than the one they're in. And even that neutrally charged sphere is a better situation than the one with the negatively charged rod. So what will happen is that basically, and we insert a little drawing just to kind of help us visualize what's going on, is that if I take some neutral sphere, okay, it's got no charge whatsoever, and then I take a little rod that's negatively charged, all right, and I'll put, doo -doo -doo. I know y'all, this is the most exciting thing in the world, watching me fumble through drawing on Google Docs. Do, 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 do. So let's say this has a negative this has a charge of like negative three. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. This is neutrally charged. Now, what that means is that if I take this sphere and I touch it to the new to the negatively charged rod, these negatively charged electrons have no interest staying on this rod. And even though this is not technically positively charged, this is still a more welcoming environment than this rod. So what's gonna happen is that the charge is kind of gonna split itself up. 
accordingly. All right. Now, in this case, it would be kind of a problem because electron can't split in half. So it would be kind of a, it would balance itself out accordingly. But basically, let's just make it a little easier on ourselves. If I took these and I touched them together, charging by conduction would cause the sphere to become negatively charged because some of the electrons would escape to it because this is a more welcoming environment. All right. So I'm just going to delete that picture because it's not, you can draw your own. Basically, charging through conduction means I take something that has a different charge than something else and I touch them together and the charges are going to kind of balance each other out between the two objects. They're going to have charge equalization. Okay, so we've had charging through friction, we've had charging through conduction. In both cases, the objects have had to specifically touch. Now, for the last case, however, it's slightly different. So it's referred to as charging through induction. All right. And I've actually included a, a diagram to the right because honestly, this is much easier to see that. And hopefully you've already, if you've watched the Bill Nye video, you saw him do this when we referred to, when he played with, he called his electroscope. Okay. And it didn't really mean much to us at the time because it was just kind of like, why is he drilling a hole in a peanut butter jar? But honestly, what he's showing is the idea of how you can kind of cause charge to build up in something or charge to move around without actually touching anything. Okay. So... Charging through induction works like this. Let's say I have a sphere that is neutrally charged, okay? And I take something that is charged, in this case a rod, and I hold it near that sphere. Now what's gonna happen is that, just like we saw in our lab with the balloon, the negative charges in the sphere are gonna get pushed away from the other charges because they have no interest being near the rod. So in this case, what's happened is all the negative charges in the sphere have moved around and moved to the other side. Okay. And an important thing to point out is that different objects allow electrons to move differently. So metal, it's really easy for electrons to move through it. Certain other objects, it's not as simple. Okay. And we're going to talk about in the next video exactly what that means. So what we've done now is we've, call, we've created something that we like to call charge polarization. And what that means is that literally when you cause a charge polarization in something, it means you take something that's neutral and you move the charges around in such a way that now one side is positively charged, one side is negatively charged, okay? Water molecules are an excellent example of that. You can easily cause charge polarization in water molecules. In fact, one of the examples, if you watch the Bill Nye video, they had a comb and they held it towards water and you could actually cause the water to start bending towards you. I highly suggest if you have a balloon, try that and see what happens because you can definitely cause the water to bend because you create charge polarization in it. Okay. Now, in order to charge this sphere, because I, I want to actually cause it to have a charge, if I hold the negative rod up to it, I've moved all the negative charges to the other side. Now, if I ground it, so if I tap a piece of wire to this metal sphere, I've now given an escape route for all the electrons that are on the metal sphere. And what they do is they say, oh, this is great. I can get the heck out of here. I don't have to be near these people at all that I can't stand. And they uh, flee and they run to the ground. Now, once you do that, if you move the wire away, and then you move the, neg the negative rod away, what happens is now the metal sphere is only left with positive charges. And what you've done is you have used induction to cause the positive sphere to become, or the sphere to become positively charged, okay? So you didn't explicitly have to touch it with the negatively charged rod. What you just had to do is just kind of hold it close and give the negative charges a way to escape, all right? And right there, what we'll see is that's exactly how you create kind of charging by induction. So three different ways to do it. And I please, I will post some other videos or look for other links if you're not sure how to go through it because all three of these things are talked about a lot online. So you have plenty of resources you can use, okay? Now, let's just talk a little bit about just one example problem and then kind of wrap it up just talking about how we can get rid of this charge. So the example problem I want you to work through is I have three identical metal spheres. Okay, so they are A, B, and C. Sphere A, a carries a charge of positive 8Q. Sphere B, a charge of positive 9Q. Sphere C carries no net charge whatsoever. And I am going to actually make this, let's see, now leave it like that, that's a big deal. 
Okay. What I want you to do is I want you to think about how the charge is going to move around if I do two things. So I'm going to put A and B together. And then I'm going to put A, B, and C. So I'm going to start by moving sphere A and B together and let them touch. And then I'm going to take sphere C and also put them together. All right. And what I want you to do is I want you to tell me what do you think the charges of sphere A and B are going to be? And what are the charges of A, B, and C going to be? All right. So take like 90 seconds. And I suggest just kind of think about the idea of the law of conservation of charge and the idea that of charges want to kind of equalizing themselves. Okay, if you need a little more time, just pause the video and then unpause it once you're ready. But with that being said, so let's kind of look at this. So I got three metal spheres. A, B, and C. I start by putting A and B together. All right. Now they're close in charge, but they're not the same, which means when I put them together, the charges are going to want to kind of equalize themselves out. So what happens is you've got one has a charge of 8Q, one has a charge of 9Q. When I put them together, they're going to kind of equalize out. And in fact, they become, they both have a charge of 8.5Q. All right. Now, when you move char sphere C there, now you have three objects the charge is being kind of split between. So basically, you look at the total charge of everything. That would be 17, positive 17Q. So when I put sphere C together, and now they're all touching, the three split the charge evenly, and now they're all going to have a charge of positive whatever 17 divided by 3 is. Okay. So we're just once going to see this idea how charge equalizes itself. All right, and just the idea that I can charge things that might not have been charged just by kind of touching them with other things. All right, this would be an example of charging through conduction because it's actually touching each other. Okay, now I know this, this topic is very confusing and can seem kind of strange at times. Just kind of keep working through it. I promise it's something where it does, it follows very simple rules. Okay, and if you have questions, please send me emails about it or look it up online because there's plenty of other videos with people that probably did it better than I did.